Uh, busy earnings season continues to get underway, but some news this week as captivated investors coming from overseas, and that is the false start, the, the beginning, and now the seeming end of the uh, European Super League, which would have been a new soccer league, basically bringing together uh, any household name that any casual American fan can um, you know, name off the top of their head together uh, in a new competition, which obviously broadcasters, banks, probably the players themselves would have all benefited from. But we've seen now uh, the spirit of competition, let's say, went out on the continent of Europe. Yahoo Finance Oscar Williams Group joins us now uh, for the latest Oscar on, on the league that was, will not be, but I think in the future, people sort of think is going to come back in some form or fashion. Well, Miles, this idea has been kicking around since the uh, late 90s. Silvio Berlusconi was one of the first to uh, try and push this when he was in charge of Milan. But once again, uh, we've seen this over the years, whenever it tries to rear its head, the fans, the players, even this time politicians, really uh, stick the boot in to bring this to a close. The European Super League is officially dead today before it even began. It news leaks of this project on Sunday, and it, it seemed like the most advanced effort we've seen since these uh, ideas began in the late 90s. Financing was secured for, from JP Morgan, over 3 billion euros. We had 12 teams all apparently signed up with binding contracts to join this new competition that was set to join as so, uh, to launch as soon as next summer. But uh, the messaging, the uh, the, uh, the market research, really, on this was woefully inadequate. Almost as soon as it was announced, uh, the fans immediately rejected it. Players on the teams who were involved spoke out against it, notably James Milner, the captain of Liverpool, which was supposed to be one of the corner piece games uh, uh, teams. Sorry, We've also seen uh, politicians, Emmanuel Macron, Boris Johnson here in the UK, also, they will do everything they can to uh, block this new league, this breakaway league. And then, of course, we had football's authorities, FIFA and UEFA, both said that players who took part in this competition would be excluded from competitions such as the World Cup and the Champions League, two of the biggest money makers in the game. Well, because of all this, the idea behind it essentially was to try and secure a financial future. It looked increasingly like it was going to destroy their financial present. So yesterday, we quickly saw this project fall apart. Chelsea, the West London Football Club, were the first to officially announce last night that they were pulling out. They were swiftly followed by Manchester City. And by this morning, all six of the Premier League teams involved and uh, accounting for half of the entire teams had pulled out. Inter Milan and Atletico Madrid have joined them. And uh, uh, the likes of Barcelona and Real Madrid are on the cusp of leaving, leaving just the likes of Juventus and uh, some of the other Italian clubs uh, in there. So it really, it, it, it has collapsed. Juventus chairman Andreas Agnelli, one of the key figureheads in this, admitted today, I don't think the project is still now up and running. Now, as well as this being a sporting failure, it's a business failure. We've seen Ed Woodward, who is the head of Manchester United, resign last night. Mm -hmm. Shares in that uh, business are down 6%, while Juventus shares are down 13% today. I think we'll continue to see shockwaves of this continue to uh, emanate out as many, many fans and investors likely are going to be very unhappy with how this has played out. Well, and Oscar, I'd love to ask you that question. Uh, as a fan, we were chatting in the break, you're a supporter of Crystal Palace, which is a, a, a club that I uh, know as one that hangs out in the middle to bottom third of the Premier League table usually, but you know, usually not up for relegation. So um, let's call it a, a solid but not elite club. I mean, how <laughs> how did you see this as a supporter um, of, of one of those types of sides? And then, you know, think about a world where you know, you're playing basically – uh, Arsenal's backups when when they do come to town because they're focused on you know the Super League and, and obviously they're going to have Champions League obligations and, and so forth. Well, from my perspective, you know, if you beat Arsenal, you beat Arsenal, and that's always a good uh, a good day out. I would much rather watch Crystal Palace beat Arsenal than watch you know however many times uh, Real Madrid are going to play uh, Arsenal if we have this new Super League and it becomes a sort of monotonous every year they play. 
Uh, and bear in mind, this was also set to be in addition to the Champions League, in addition to the Premier League. We already have a really packed schedule of games over here in Europe. So it would have been yet more football uh, to watch. I mean, if I had to diagnose the problem here underlying this, it seems like they're very worried about a lack of interest and uptake among newer generations of fans. It's not necessarily the product that's an issue, it's how they market it, how they sell it to these new generations and get it in front of their uh, in front of their eyes. What we've clearly seen over the last 48 hours is these people are not very good at managing press relations, at managing uh, you know, many, many stakeholders and imaging. They're very good at uh, spending money, raising money and accumulating money, but uh, I think we need a little bit more than that. All right, Oscar Williams Group with the latest uh, on the state of European football, we'll say, uh, as we head towards uh, an eventful summer. Euro is happening this summer, if, I, if I'm correct. Is that right? Hopefully, fingers crossed. Hopefully, hopefully. We'll see. All right, Oscar, we'll talk to you uh, later on this.